All right, 2.2, derivative rules. So in 2.1, we talked about finding the derivative, which we did in Chapter 1. Now we're going to look at finding a derivative faster using specific derivative rules. Today we're going to look at three types, three specific rules. First one is called the power rule. The power rule is, states that if you have a function, let's say f at x, that is, an, uh, that is a power, say x to the power of n, where n is some real number and x is the variable, then the derivative of that power is equal to take the exponent n, bring the n in front, okay, and subtract the exponent by 1. And that's exactly what the power rule is. The next concept is the constant rule. The derivative of a constant, if f at x is equal to some sort of number, any constant, where co the constant belongs to real, is a real number, then the derivative of that constant is equal to zero. So again, Let's go through the first rule, the first two rules. In the first case, we have a power rule where you have the derivative of a power of x to the power of n, where n belongs to some real number. And then the derivative of that power is equal to the exponent in front. So you move the exponent as a coefficient multiply to any other coefficient that's there, and then the exponent is n minus 1. In the second one, you have a constant rule. So what this is saying is like an example of a line where the line equals uh, a number. So let's say y equals 2. What does y equals 2 look like on a graph? Well, it looks like a horizontal line. What is the slope of a horizontal line? Because remember, essentially a derivative is the slope. Well, logically, guys, any horizontal line, the derivative has to equal zero. Again, that's for any constant that belongs to real. All right, next one. Our last one is sum and difference rule. What, are the sum, what is the sum and difference rule? Well, if you have the sum of two functions where g and h are differentiable, then the derivative of the sum of those two functions is equal to the individual derivatives, sum or difference of the individual derivatives. So these are your three rules. These three rules are pretty much essential what you need to be able to do to answer the questions in this section. We'll be looking at product rule and quotient rule in a little bit. All right, example number, uh, let's look at some simple examples where we need to find the derivative of each of these. So these are relatively simple ones using the rules that we just have. f at x equals x, square, x cubed, y equals x squared, and f at x equals 4x to the power of 5. These are all to deal with the power rule. The second one, or the next ones, are all are two constants. And the third one on this line, so this one's a constant one, Sorry, this one's a constant one, this is a constant one, and this one is going to be the sum and difference rule. And then we have another sum and difference rule over here. And we need to find the derivatives of all of these. So let's find the derivative of the first one. This is using the power rule. So f prime of x is equal to 3x squared. Let's look at the next one. y prime is equal to 2x. Look at the next one, f prime of x is equal to 20x to the power of 4. f of x is equal to 9, that means f prime of x is equal to 0. y prime is equal to 0 for this one, and for this one the answer is 10x to the power of 4 plus 3. And the last one, derivative of this is 6x squared plus 6x minus 1. All right, so these are relatively simple ones. 
look, let's look at questions that are a little bit more complicated. All right, example number two. Given f at x is equal to 2x minus 1 over x cubed plus root x, find the derivative, okay? Determine the derivative. So what does that mean? Well, that's what I want you to find. I want you to determine... f prime of x. All right, let's look at this. So in order to determine f prime of x, let's look at the solution, but maybe we'll go back one step just so that you know how to do this problem. So let's go back to the question again. Example number two, given the function, determine the derivative. Okay. Well, in order to determine this derivative, folks, we need to be able to look at each individual piece. But before we can do that, we should probably convert everything to be in exponential form first. Just because we haven't worked with anything where there's a denominator or a quotient, and this also has an ex can be converted to an exponent, which then we can use the power rule. All right, so f at x is equal to 2x, which isn't a problem for us, this one turns into x to the power of negative 3. If you remember your negative exponent properties, this should be x to the power of negative 3. And the last one, plus root x, is equal to x to the power of 1 half. So these are the three terms which we are, need to find the derivative. Now we put it in exponential form to be able to find the derivative. So f prime of x is equal to 2 m minus negative 3, x to the power of negative 4. The reason why it's minus negative 3, if you have the minus here, we bring this exponent in front, so it's minus negative 3, x to the power of, and we have to take this exponent and subtract 1, which gives us negative 4, plus 1 half, x to the power of, let's find out, well, we bring that half to the front, so 1 half x to the power of 1 half minus 1. So if you're thinking about it, you should be getting x to the negative a half. Now, we simplify this and you get 2 plus 3 over x to the power of 4 plus 1 over 2 x to the 1 over 2 1 over 2 times root x. Now, if you're looking at the simplify the question, remember that you need to make sure that depends on what the question is asking. Read the rules and always ask your prof how they want the final answer displayed. Some professors do not want a root in the denominator. So if you can have that case, what you will do is 2 plus 3 over x to the power 4 plus root x over 2x, and that will be the final answer for that one. All right, next one. Example number three. Given y equals x plus 3 times x plus 2, calculate the derivative. In order to calculate the derivative, we need to look at this function and say, okay, how are we going to do that? We don't know how to do anything with multiplication yet. So, the only thing we can do with this is first expand y. So we're going to use FOIL to expand it. And you find out that y is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now you're going to use the sum and difference rule to, for derivatives to be able to find the value. So y prime is equal to 2x plus 5. And that's it, folks. That's all it is. We're taking the derivative of each of these pieces. The derivative of this is 0, so the derivative of this is 2x, the derivative of this is 5. And that's the answer. y prime is equal to 2x plus 5. If you were to do it in Leibniz notation, for example, remember that Leibniz, just remind you the spelling, L-I-B-N-I-Z, Leibniz notation means that you have to write it as dy by dx. Just a reminder of that. All right, example number four. Given f at x is equal to x squared plus 5 root x over x, calculate f prime at x. What are we doing here? Well, look at the question. We don't know how to do anything with rationals, with division, and things like that. But 
What can we do to simplify the expression so that we won't have anything with division? Well, folks, in this question, you have to understand what this is saying. It says that all of the numerator is divided by this one denominator. This turns out to be the common denominator between both of these values. So if we were to simplify this first, we would have f at x is equal to x, which is x squared over x, plus 5 over root x. The reason why is remember that 5 root x is 5x to the half. When you subtract 1, it'll be negative a half. Or you could have written this f at x as x plus 5x to the negative a half. Either way, you would have it, but eventually you would have to write it this way. All right, now you need to find the derivative. So f prime of x is equal to the derivative of x, which is 1, and then the derivative of this, let's bring this to the front. That turns out to negative 5 over 2, or plus 5 times negative 1 half, x to the negative 3 halves. Now, depending on the way the question is asked, you may just have to simplify and move things to the denominator. You may not need to get rid of a root if you don't need to. It all depends on what the question is asking. All right, next one. Oh, so let's actually simplify this last one. We could have f of x, f prime of x, equals 1 minus 5 square root of x cubed all over 2x cubed. And that would be the rationalization of that previous question. Again, it depends on what is expected as your final answer. In my case, it all depends on what the instructions say, and the instructions will be clearly indicated. All right, folks, have a good night. Take care.